Yeah, so this is the first uh, kind of part of the, my talk. I split it. It's not in the, in the booklet, sorry, but I wanted to talk about this. And it, it, it's about bathymetry, actually, uh, since Mohammed mentioned that. Indeed, the bathymetry is, uh, over which the wave is propagating is absolutely key. And here we wanted to quantify this, bath this bathymetry effect. So this is uh, NOAA information. So NOAA, the uh, US organization that releases for free uh, a lot of information. It's, it's fabulous, the, what they're doing. Uh, and these are both tracks of, uh, of uh, surveys, or the surveys of, uh, that have been carried out in the past to um, sample bathymetry information, so seabed uh, elevation. And you can tell that it's a bit random. <laughs> it's not completely random, but, and you can tell, you can see something else, that in shallow water here, you, you know, the, the boats tend to, you know, uh, not venture too close to uh, shallow water. Why? Because the captains of these boats have a, an equipment, a multi-beam uh, sonar, that's about, I've, I've, told, I've been told $20 million at the bottom of their ship, and they don't really want to <laughs> take a risk with that, so they come back. You know, if it becomes too shallow, they... So in very shallow water, actually, in, in uh, Washington State here, they have a LIDAR study that has been uh, carried out. When it's clear water, it's very, very nice uh, study, and very nice uh, data set, very, very shallow water. In between, it's not very clear what's happening. Uh, what is the bathymetry? And, sh and shallow water is exactly the place where the tsunami is amplified. The tsunami wave, as you know very well in Japan, uh, unfortunately uh, travels very fast in deep ocean uh, and then slows down when it gets to uh, shallow water and is amplified as well. It's a square root relationship, basically. Um, so uh, near, near shore bathymetry is crucial to the understanding of the risk. And we were worried because we're looking at this area called Grace Harbor. This town is called Aberdeen, Washington State. That's where Kurt Cobain was born, if you're familiar. <laughs> uh, it's at risk. So we're, we're trying to quantify risk. Uh, and this is, uh, again, Victoria, British Columbia. Seattle is here. Vancouver is there. So this uncertainty in surveys as, as a, is it problematic. Some people have, have looked at this, but we wanted to have a more principled approach. So again, uh, we are going to look at Gaussian processes, but the, the literature on Gaussian processes is uh, vast. Uh, you know, the people in machine learning want it, working on, on Gaussian processes, a huge community. Obviously, the spatial statistics people who work on, on Gaussian processes um, have been working on Gaussian processes on the on the on the plane, typically, or now on the sphere, everywhere. But I want to mention this approach. So, so the Gaussian field with maternal covariance function. So, if you if you go back to what I said earlier. The correlation here is, is parameterized differently. Instead of having one over L for the length scale or the correlation length, we have this uh, scale factor kappa here that modifies the uh, decay in terms of correlation in the input space. Here it's in space, in location, right? The input is location. The output is a value on, on a specific location S. Anyway, so that's, that's a, another way of parameterizing, but, but it's the same, uh, same uh, covariance function, right? We see three levels of covariance function. I can advertise it already. We'll have, we'll have one Gaussian process, I mean, one correlation, uh, sorry, one kernel, it's also called kernel, one correlation uh, function or covariance function for the spatial uh, distribution of these uh, bathymetry points. One uh, for the Gaussian process that will do the emulation of the tsunami model, and one also for the for some something else for for a trick that will help us to reduce dimension. So what I want to say, and I should have put the reference here in the next slide, if this is the case, is that a new technique was introduced by, um, in 2011, roughly by Finn Lindgren, Havard Brew uh, at Kaust, now the INLA SPD technique. Uh, I mentioned just the SPD, but it relies on it, it, it relies on uh, INLA as well, and it relies on Gaussian Markov random fields that uh, uh, Youssef uh, discussed. So what it says is that there's a, the old th theorem that says from Rittel that says that uh, a Gaussian field with just such return covariance function uh, is associated with the solution or is the solution to uh, a stochastic partial differential equation. So Z is this. Uh, process here, stochastic process, on 
uh, on the on, on, on the plane. And then you have the Laplacian here, you have a Wiener process there. Well, what did you gain? You, you went from a covariant structure on, on, the, on the plane here to uh, solving a stochastic partial differential equation, no gain, uh, more, more like, uh, it's awful, right? But uh, these people, uh, Fiddlingren with Edinburgh now, and others have uh, decided that, well, let's attack the problem in that direction and let's solve it efficiently. So they, what they say is they expand these, uh, uh, they expand on a basis, you see a finite element with the Xiaoyu, we published another paper where we expanded to bavarian splines, so sometimes it's more efficient, but the JCGS paper. But these people have completely uh, settled the issue, and they also work on the precision, that's exactly the idea that you said presented on Monday, uh, that you, you look for sparsity in the precision matrix, and then everything computes efficiently. So this, it scales in n to the power uh, 1.5, or 3 half, uh, n is the number of locations in space. Uh, it's really efficient in terms of, of inference. You, and not only is it efficient, but it's a fully Bayesian model, so you can condition on the hyperparameters. I mean, I'm not going to, into the details here, but you have complete description of the uncertainties. It's valid. It's even more, uh, more accurate than, uh, than, than Craiging based on these, uh, maternal covariance function. I, you know, we can discuss that, uh, at length. Anyway, so this is a fully Bayesian method that does everything well, and it's also well uh, implemented in R, and it's fantastic. <laughs> so, yeah. Alpha? Yes, sorry. Yeah, that's a very good, very good point. I, 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 many things are under the carpet. <laughs> Alpha is actually fixed. It's a, it has to be fixed according to the dimension and the smoothness. It relates the two. Uh, the formula exactly, I think it's, uh, nu plus d over three or something, no, over two, some, d over two, yeah. And then, uh, tau is, uh, in some way the equivalent of sigma square, uh, but it's, uh, in the other direction. And z is the bathymetry. Z is the bathymetry, yeah, here. And u? Use the location, I'm uh, sorry, the notations are not consistent. It's z of s, z of u, but it doesn't matter, yeah. Yes. Okay. Uh, but if you look at possible stuff, possible bathymetry is almost like a fraction, right? Good point. Uh, yes, some places, yes, yes. If, if, it can be like that. So the smoothness of the field is also yeah. of interest, yeah. You sorry? It would depend on alpha, yes. Uh, alpha is uh, alpha, nu, they, are, they play the same role. But they are difficult to estimate, huh? you know that. Uh, this new, that uh, I, in the other set of slides, I didn't talk about it. Uh, uh, Michael Stein talks at, at length about this. You know, this, this, this smoothness is almost impossible to infer. It's a difficult story. No, uh, this is, I should have really, I, I have a set, another set of slides that I, because I teach this also. It's fabulous. So, uh, uh, since, uh, I mean, I, I'm, I'm not working, it's not for myself, it's those people are absolutely uh, amazing in terms of what they, they introduced. So, if you work with this, you're stuck. You have a typically isotropic, uh, it's, it's, it depends only on the distance. Uh, it, it's also stationary in space, it doesn't vary, so some, some, parts of the space can have a different behavior in terms of correlation uh, structure. Uh, they, it's the case in, uh, in atmospheric science, for example, uh, I've published a, sorry? Yeah, so I'm looking, uh, so, uh, well, uh, I should pull up my, my slides, but these people have, have uh, you, you can change the tau to tau of s, kappa to kappa of s, expand that in a, in a, in a basis also, and it works beautifully because you solve this uh, stochastic PD after that. You don't, you don't really care about the underlying structure. You can't afford that with this Gaussian field. People who have tried to tackle uh, non-stationary fields uh, or, or to estimate uncertainty about uh, spatial fields that are non-stationary have suffered tremendously in the past using this. This is completely wiped out with this technique. It's fabulous. It's also on the sphere. On the sphere, so I have uh, written a paper with another PhD student of mine where we estimate the global surface of ozone uh, on the on the on the on, on the sphere with non-stationary feature on the sphere, and it's efficient. It's, uh, it's very. So, uh, so I, I misunderstood. So your stochastic PD is 
is a replacement yeah. for the covariance. Yes. It's, it's, the solution to this is ex it's, it's equivalent to be solution of that and to be a random field with such a covariance structure. Ah, I didn't think about that. Uh, a way to sample yeah, in some way. Yes, 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 yes. Yeah. Actually, you're totally right. That's how we get. That's how we started actually, because we wanted to sample surfaces, and really, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because it has to be coherent. You can sample the whole surface, uh, so it's really nice. Yeah. Yes. Psy K? Yeah, it's a, uh, like you saw the PDE. You saw, sorry? Fi yeah, it's finite elements. Uh. Yes. Yes, that's why we want to do dimensional reduction. Exactly. We're going to reduce M. Yes, uh, not exactly, no, 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 no. These Ws are uh, weights of the solution uh, in that basis. Versus W here is the noise that generates, is the, is the sorry, yeah? Is not, sorry? Yeah, yeah, if you, if you were to solve a PDE, you would, you would call it like that. I'm, I'm not a PDE person, but you, Well, I, I, I'm not going into the, yeah. No, this is just the locations of, of interest. Um, what, what, what's your question? Um, I mean, this, this, there's a lot hidden here. Ah, well. You solve. Yeah, there's a difference between the inverse of the covariance matrix and the set of that. It's quite sparse. Exactly. It's extremely sparse. Like tridiagonal or something like that, yeah. So it's, it's very sparse, very efficient. Typically tridiagonal, yeah. Tridiagonal is in one piece. Yes. Block, yeah, it's, I mean, in details, I, I don't know. Actually, they, they take, when we wrote a paper with, on extension, we had to go into the details of how they do it, and there's some, there's some, um, tricks that I've heard, uh, probably this week. You, you were talking about that in data simulation yesterday, even though I was half sleepy, I could, couldn't. Well, that's the trick. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> maybe I should write. That's what Sir Yusuf was explaining yesterday, this conditional independence uh, in Gaussian Markov random fields. So if you have A and C conditional independent on B, the translation of that E in terms of uh, covariance or precision matrix is, is, is through the precision matrix. We, I don't have the details here on the screen, but it's the idea. Uh, so, and that's what you expect in spatial statistics. You expect uh, when you know B, A, and C are independent, and this is conditional independence. It's not independent. It's, uh, but 
But it's, uh, you know, if you're interested, it's a very long paper, by the way, in Jurassic B with discussion, many discussions. Uh, I was there in the, in attendance of the, at the Royal Statistical Society. We have meetings. The papers are read. <laughs> and then, it's very interesting, those, uh, meetings. Anyway, so, but this is really excellent, uh, technique. I've used it. <laughs> yeah. So why are we doing this? Okay, again, to, uh, represent the, the uncertainty in the surfaces of, of bathymetry. So we have this. And then what we want to do uh, is um, reduce the dimension of, I mean, M, right? It's about 3,000 for us. It's a toy problem. In our real problem for Cascadia, we have 2.3 million uh, cells. Now I'm doing, I'm doing simulation for uh, the Indian Ocean. I have a new project on this. It's about 16, 30 million cells. Anyways, it's not the same. Tr oh, sorry, I'm, 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 I'm confusing you here. The triangulation is on which you uh, solve this uh, stochastic PD. It's not the same triangulation as the unstructured mesh that I'm using to solve the tsunami uh, model simulation. Uh, it's not ZI. No, no, the I is the uh, basis uh, index. It's the index of the functions in the basis. Did I make a mistake? Yeah. So not yeah, not all value. Yeah, I don't I don't know the. Ah, I see, I see, I see. Yeah, because it's true, it's true. Because, you're right, you have only one value. Yeah. Okay, fine. Yeah, sorry, yeah. You, subgrade scale we don't have. Is that what you mean? Yeah, okay. Yeah, good point. So, um, so we want to quantify the uncertainty in the, in the resulting tsunami height when varying the bathymetry. Okay, so if you vary x, the input, which is the bathymetry, let's say, uh, you, you expect uh, f of x, which is the tsunami wave, the tsunami wave height at the end location, at some location of interest at the coast, to vary. But, you know, as you know very well, you know, it's, it's, it's almost impossible to generate that many simulations. So you use the Gaussian process that I explained before. We actually, we don't even use Matern. It doesn't, the, the influence of the covariance structure on a, on a, Surrogate models of uh, G GP is not so important, to be honest, that the, the, the shape of this covariance structure, unless you have many simulations. I explained that in the, in the past, right? So, again, the challenge is high dimensional M, thousands higher to solve this. Uh, you know, typically in Gaussian process, we, the rule of thumb is about 10 runs for each parameter. So if you have three, four parameters, you have three, 30, 40, you know, some papers about it, kind of. The minimum, well now if we have 3,000, we're talking 30,000 uh, simulations of the tsunami model, we can't afford that. So sufficient dimension reduction, this, uh, this, uh, this is what uh, Loic, uh, Loic sorry, was uh, alluding to, is this idea of, uh, of finding a linear combination of the inputs or a subspace in you were right to mention that it's the space that's important, the, the actual space, uh, such that you, you don't reduce the um, information in Y, the response, by providing R of X instead of X, right? So that's sufficient dimensional reduction. Oh, okay, so the many techniques that have been uh, introduced in the past, slice inverse re uh, regression, slice average, m median average, whatever. And uh, Kenji Fukumizu at the Institute of uh, Statistical Mathematics in Tokyo, uh, introduced this uh, fabulous technique uh, again. So again, this, this work is just combining very advanced work. I, I, I respect a lot this, uh, I mean, I, I'm, I'm quite impressed by, the, by this uh, technique. So what, is, what are they doing, these people? They are, they're looking at gradient-based kernel dimension reduction. So again, another kernel, the third kernel that shows up. And what are, I'm going to explain in the next slide, huh? uh, quickly, because it's uh, long. But the idea is to first estimate B. So we have to find B, this projector in some way, from a simulation sample. Uh, and then use uh, em emulation or, you know, fit your Gaussian process on a reduced space of dimension D. Sorry for the P is M. So. Okay? But this is the trick. I mean, all of these techniques are trying to do that. So these, these uh, techniques, are typically looking at the relationship in the other direction. They do inverse regression. That's why it's IR. So you regress the X onto the Y to figure out what is actually informative. 
what people have done in the D past uh, was to just do uh, PCA on X, right? You just do PCA on X and then you, re you regress Y on X, but that's not right. Uh, Dennis Cook, who has invented many of these things and has written books on it, uh, you know, shows examples. It's not because the first few uh, patterns are, you know, the most active in the, in the field. Let's say if you think of EOFs in geophysics, uh, that's the, that they are going to be the most influential uh, on, the, on the response, let's say. Okay?